first one is this supposed to be the one over the over Good the evening, board. gentlemen. Thank you for joining us at the our first meeting of the new year. For the High Park Planning Board, please take note of the exits around the room and uh, join me as we salute the American flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A, a housekeeping note first. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Murphy. Thank you for signing on for another <laughs> seven-year term. Uh, I and Michael, was, thank you for uh, signing <laughs> on as the uh, chairperson. Thank for you. Year. It was interesting to be at the town board reorganization meeting and hear that you will not be stepping down until 2021. 2021, right, yeah. <laughs> well, I probably get renewed again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hope so. Um, and second, we signed all the contracts, so again, our consultants remain the same. Uh, Rodenhouse and Shaw for attorney and Morse Associates for engineer. I did instruct the engineer and our planning consultant there was no need for them to come tonight. Um, and I'll get, explain why when we get into the first uh, item on the agenda, which is the Carriage Trail at Town Center, commonly referred to by us as Crofton Muse, its original <laughs> name. <laughs> Applicants are seeking site plan extension uh, for a project that was first uh, submitted in 1996 and has been approved since I joined the board in 2006. I make it a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Riley, you want to come up? Supervisor Riley, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to give you your, your no, I, I, people who stick their neck out on the line to run for office deserve the credit that it, that it gets. In the interim, Chairman. we had asked Mr. <laughs> right, we had asked Mr. Rowley to submit something to show us that the wetland delineation, uh, the wetland boundaries had not moved. Uh, it appears that they were last certified back in uh, 2004 and we are required by the DEC or requested by the DEC to have them recertified every six years. Um, Mr. Raleigh submitted some maps. They're not precisely what we asked for, um, but they appear to show that the wetlands have not migrated any. But also in the last resolution that we had uh, approved offer during the last extension, which was 16-96 EE, uh, in the second whereas clause or resolved clause, we asked for recertification and evidence of DEC approval. That wasn't submitted, but in the interim, I did speak to Mike Rubo, formerly of our CAC, uh, who's, as we know, uh, a bio an ecologist. And he did tell me that it would be better if we really want to make sure that the lines are formed correctly or that we can get them correctly. This is not the time of year to do it. While a delineator could do it during the winter, it's far easier if you wait till there's spring thaw. So it wouldn't really be possible to get anything done right now to know for real accuracy. I, I don't disagree, and that's why I was suggesting that we could make it a condition to the approval that be done by uh, late spring. Uh, having done the mapping project, it wasn't exactly a recertification, but it did delineate the uh, improvements that were done over the years to make sure that they, they were not inf inflicting any damage to any of the, the wetland boundaries, and, and in fact that the setbacks were exceeding. Um, the required setbacks mm -hmm. and that the wetlands themselves haven't migrated substantially between 2003 and 13. And I think the, the mapping project did accomplish those um, aspects. And now the DEC approval among all of our approvals uh, is the only one that's going to expire in, in 2015 in December. So we were going to have to undertake that anyway. anyway. So that was the reason I asked for uh, an approval only till November of 2015, mm -hmm. understanding that the board could not approve something that was uh, beyond the most current of the uh, subsidiary approvals. So uh, that is underway regardless. Uh, the reason I was requesting to make it a condition of the approval so, uh, so that basically the transaction for the new buyer could be completed uh, with a, an approval in place and with uh, lawyers at transaction closings like to have clarity if, I, if they know that they have to do one, two, and three by X, Y, and Z date they are very happy with that. If they know that the approval is in some kind of status, uh, then that, that makes them hard to uh, understand uh, the transaction. So this work has to be undertaken regardless this year. Uh, we've been very diligent over the, the 10 plus years of keeping all of our approvals in place, and most of our approvals now extend between 2016 and 2020. And uh, the DEC work uh, will be done in 2015 
in, I think, a timely fashion. And I, don't, I think it's, it's a matter of paperwork, not a, uh, an issue that the board has to worry about, that there is some issue with the wetlands. And I think the mapping project at least proved that. And just to, it, it, I believe, I agree with you. And just to also reassert uh, back into the record that the initial project as approved, the development and area of disturbance was pulled away, as you said, from the wetlands that are there. And also they were beyond the 100 foot adjacent uh, area. We also refer to as buffer. The only thing that would, could have changed would be if somehow the wetlands had really migrated to be so that the, the adjacent area um, was then going to be less than 100. That would still be a DEC issue, which you'll have to go back to anyway. Yep. So I personally am comfortable moving forward, the, particularly the way the resolution is written. Um, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, first, is there anything else you want to add? Um, no, I, I think that if there's any other questions in regards to the narrative, I, I did prepare that in the draft petition going over the what is going on uh, this year in terms of the uh, transfer of the property. Uh, the new owner should be in place by February 1st. Uh, I, speaking with Tad Moss and um, other members of, of the town professional staff, uh, the new owners are any owner, including uh, the, the buyers that are very interested, have been made aware that there'll be uh, work to be done immediately in regards to getting new uh, storm water plans in place, erosion control in place, and that the, uh, the project will need attention as soon as the weather turns. So I want to assure the town that the, one of the reasons we're trying to get this done now is so that the, own, the uh, new developer will have time between February and, and March to get a, their their feet wet on the project, <laughs> so to speak, and, and hit the ground running in spring to not only deal with the DEC wetlands, which is an approval issue, but also the other issues that Miss um, Moss was uh, more interested in, which was getting the site back into right. a, a, a controlled state for stormwater. Right. Um, I do want to also just state for the record that per your narrative and our own knowledge, the project has not changed since it was last approved. No. Uh, so that all see other seeker impacts would remain the same. There is no Im change to the impact in traffic, et cetera. Um, everything else has remained remain the same. You're just seeking an extension. So uh, I was going to say, let me start with the consultant. But instead, let me start to my left. Mr. Cigna, any comments? No. The, so the reason for the delay in, in getting the wetlands properly delineated was because you were waiting until? Uh, there wasn't a reason for delay. It, the the permit would right. be necessary for December of 2015. So the work was going to be planned for the summer of 2014. 14, right. Regardless, uh, right. The, the question came up only in, in extending the approvals from November of 14 to November of 15. At what point uh, was the board comfortable making that extension without some preliminary idea of w if there's going to be an issue with the wetlands? And so the mapping project was done to assure the board that we don't feel that there's any physical issue with the wetlands. It's the matter of the paperwork being done, the field studies. They have to go out and stake it, take samples, yep. and, and work with the DEC this summer. Okay. Any other comments? No, that's all. Mr. Murphy? Yeah, I have, a, I, I have no problem with the wetlands issue, but um, I'm wondering how old this number, about the 676,000 $854.77 bond. Um, I'm wondering, you know, because I've been here a long time, I, Mr. Riley and I have gotten to know each other well. I'm wondering how old that number is. The number is dated. I did, <laughs> I, I thought I copied everybody on the planning board. Maybe I didn't, but I did request Mr. Sotero and Ms. Axelson to take a look at the number. And Mr. Sotero resp res replied by saying, keep it the same. Okay. Um, the reason why is there have been some changes in costs. Wages have gone up, but of course, as gas prices have gone down, or fuel prices have gone down, cost of asphalt has reduced. Um, and he said that he thought it looked roughly the same. Plus, he anticipates that with any new owner, there will be some project changes. There, there's, I'm sure there will be modifications sought in terms of minor uh, issues. The, the current approvals, as they are uh, laid out, require that bond to be updated prior to a building permit. Correct. Anyway. So I, I knew at that point that Mr. Sotero would take a look at it. I think it was done in 2012, at which time asphalt prices were at a near peak. So if anything, 
uh, the town is secure knowing okay. that they that's all that. yep. that's, that's all. a good question because I thought about it that's why I asked him to that's why I again I was going to say I didn't ask him to be here because that's the only information that he had to impart was that he was comfortable well, I think with he should have come here anyway just <laughs> yeah. it, it was updated about five or six times from 2003 to 2012 correct okay um, and again that's right asphalt prices were higher because fuel prices were higher at that yeah. point Mr. Groninger? Uh, no additional comments. Ms. Dexter? Um, I guess my only uh, question was, in the set of maps here, I could not tell for the life of me what the difference was between page one and page two. Dates. Dates? One Dates? was 03 and one was 13? Oh, it was a comparison. Right. It was that showing you the asked, You asked to see what the wetlands were at the date of initial approval, which okay. was 2003, and the most recent uh, Google mapping of that site, which was 2013. You didn't actually ask for that. You asked for a recertification of the wetland boundaries. But he but was, <laughs> was proposing that this was close enough, right? So, right. Um, and if you look at the map, you can't really see that there's been much movement. Now, you're really high, but, you know. Well, but I also don't know exactly when the dates were that the photos were taken. and. Well, th they are listed on the mapping. Right. Okay. And they're both leaf off, uh, time periods right. of leaf off, obviously. And I. I I apologize, Victoria. I thought I was responding to what Mr. Sotero's request was at the um, last meeting, which was not for a recertification, but which was for a narrative with some type of overlay um, showing the board that the DEC wetlands were still in place. Right. As per my notes, Mr. Sotero said we want to be cooperative because, again, yeah. it, it, I need to stress, um, and Vic if you have questions of Victoria, she can answer, but yeah. so can Mr. Riley. The applicants in this case are constitutionally vested I believe because they spent remember they they already installed oh, yeah, they all the all infrastructure. infrastructure right so uh, it's it would not be prudent for us even though other members besides myself may question whether this will ever really happen it's not really prudent for us to say we're, we don't see it's going to happen so we're just going to deny it because there's no real reason oh. for us to do so um, the question is just do we treat how do we handle treating the wetlands uh, boundaries that we do everybody else which is after so many years we make them recertify in this case, they're going to have to anyway because your DEC permit expires. So, um, comments, Mr. Oliver? No, I, I agree with the approach, and thank you for taking the time for the narrative and the, you know, the overlay. And uh, hopefully, it'll, the property will change hands, and uh, this spring you'll get the, the t proper tests. I think there's a, a, a very optimistic viewpoint on the project, and I understand why there would be hesitancy on anybody's thoughts uh, in whether or not the project would, would finally get moving, but uh, the cycles uh, of the business world do turn and, and we are finally on the uh, top end of the wheel again. So I, have, uh, I am cautiously optimistic that someone is going to put enough money into this project to, to make it the next step and the, uh, the $11 million invested between 2003 and 2014 will not uh, be for naught. Mr. Bersigliano? <laughs> no comments, no questions. Um, would anyone from the public like to speak about this application? Mm. Mr. Ma, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while, by the way. How's everything? Good? Good. Um, there being no other comments from the public, uh, Ms. Pollardero, do you have any comments? Um, my only comment was that, you know, in 2012, we did advise the applicant he would have to recertify the wetland boundaries before he came back. And of course, it's 2015. And uh, again, we're asking for an extension. So rather than granting the full year that he's requested, I'm, I'm recommending that you limit it. Because otherwise, you know, our um, clauses lose their effectiveness if we don't enforce them. So we would be the, the first resolved uh, clause would then say that we are extending it to June 7th, which should give you time to recertify. Do you think that's enough time for you to have the owners go through all that, or? I think it's probably close. Um, a, a, I, don't, I don't disagree with you, Victoria. I think there's been some extenuating circumstances for why uh, this particular approval was put off until, um, it, it's not an expired approval. It, it, it goes to the end of December 2015. I understand that the board looked at it in 2012 and wanted to, to recertify it. Uh, it should have been probably done this year, but due to the transfer of the property, it was put off. Um, uh, and you understand litigation uh, more than most, I'm sure, so that there was an intervening cause. And I, I think that the approval for what is now a, a nine-month period 
uh, does not put the board at any risk and it, I think it's a very <coughs> short period of time for for a lot of work to be done I wouldn't want to have to come back in June and say do we need a week or two weeks uh, so it, it, you're, would you requ are you requesting that we extend it a little bit further than June 7th yeah I, I mean if you did maybe the July meeting it would give me a little bit more comfort that if we ran into a, a harsh winter where they couldn't start uh, their field inspections as quickly as we'd like, um, <coughs> that would be more comfortable if, if you're doing just a shorter approval versus a conditional approval. I was also happy with a conditional approval where you did the, the one year with 180 days or 160 days or whatever condition you would have to submit the, the research to keep that approval going. Which, Ms. So Blood, which would you prefer? I, I just want to point out first off that the the time is retroactive back to November right. when this would have expired. Right. So at this point, it really is a five month extension. Going to July would make it eight months, but really six months six. to get the work done. Uh, I think it's I'm fine with July. It seems uh, reasonable uh, to me. Uh, Ms. Nath, can you tell happen. me? Can you give me the, the date of the first July meeting so we can correct the resolution? I'm sorry, I don't have a calendar out. In the meantime, as I July, said, we all want to be July cooperative. July 1st. And July, is it really? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Signer. July 1st. So, so, so we'll we can change. keep it to July 7th. Yeah. July 1st. That will give them, then it's a full month. month, month, month. You're right. We'll do July 7th. That means you would, you would have to notify us before July 7th. Mm -hmm. so uh, it's changing. To right. Eight it's eight going eight to July 7th on the resolution? Right. Mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. And changing the title to say eight month. Eight month. Right. And <coughs> the resolution say Eight. Okay. Anybody else have any other discussion? I get a motion to close the public hearing. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And who has this file? I do. Oh. <laughs> Resolution to grant an eight-month extension of time to complete construction carriage trail at Town Center. Resolution 16-96F. F. Whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that pursuant to section 108-9.6A of the code, the planning board hereby grants an eight-month extension of the time in which the applicant must complete construction to and including July 7th, 2015, and be it further resolved that any future request for an extension of the time in which to complete the conditions of approval shall include recertification of the wetland boundaries and evidence of DEC approval of the delineation and be it further resolved that if and when agreement with Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority is reached relating to the water line, all legal agreements and or documents created in connection with the agreement shall be submitted to the town attorney and planning board attorney for approval and be it further resolved that before a building permit may be issued for any improvements on the property, the applicant shall submit a letter of credit or other equivalent security in the amount of $676,854.77 as required by Resolution 16-96CC and again in Resolution 16-96EE, subject to review by the town attorney as to form, sufficiency, and manner of execution. And be it further resolved that before a building permit may be issued for any improvements on the property, the applicant shall repair and reinstall all Blanding's turtle mitigation measures and be it further resolved that no building permit shall be issued until the applicant has submitted an updated SWIP to the town which is acceptable to the planning board engineer and stormwater management officer and has applied for a local stormwater permit and be it further resolved that no certificate of occupancy for the <coughs> last completed structure on the site shall be issued until an as-built survey has been submitted to the zoning administrator. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And uh, Thank you, Mr. Riley, will you, do you think you'll be still involved with this application once the sale is made? That is a good possibility. Good. We look forward to work. We look forward to working with you in the future. It's been a pleasure all this time. Thank you very much, and if parents, I, I appreciate all of your patience and understanding. Absolutely, and I hope not. Have a safe drive back. The next, the next item on the agenda, is a sign permit recommendation for Riverside Auto Park. We have the recommendation from Ms. Moss. 
Everyone had a chance to, to review the proposed signage? Mm -hmm. They have. It is code compliant. Uh, who has this file? I do. Mm -hmm. Re uh, resolution recommendation for issuance of sign permit pursuant to town code section 108-24.3A sub 4 sub D Riverside Auto Park January 7th 2015 resolution 14-48A whereas whereas be it therefore resolved the board hereby recommends the sign permit be issued within 10 days of this site being brought into compliance with the approved site plan and provisions of the zoning code. Be it further resolved that if the sign permit cannot be issued within 90 days, that this recommendation expires and a new sign permit application will be required, along with a new application fee before another recommendation will be considered. Second. Uh, any discussion? The only question I have, there was a question as to the location of that sign. Um, in a, an agenda meeting, and has that been clarified? That Ms. Moss said it was clarified that it is in the right location. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Now, this was for the uh, the freestanding sign. We also have a separate resolution for the wall sign. Do you have that one too? I do. Again, January seventh, twenty fifteen. Resolution 14-48, uh, whereas, whereas, be it resolved, the board hereby recommends the sign permit be issued for the wall sign within 10 days of the recommendation as specified in the code. Do I have a second? Second. second. Is that under the same conditions as the other one because you still have the same? It's a slightly different issue. condition. This has to be up by 10 days. Um, I might add the sign's already up, so. Right. But. It's yeah, just see. a little bit, it's, it's, a, it's under a de different section of code, too. That's why we did them separately. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is a new sign for a new business, Candy Nail and Spa. Would you be the Candy Nail and Spa people? Okay. Just curious. Um, this is a business that's going into Rockledge Plaza, the recently renovated, <coughs> recently renovated plaza on 9G. This and another business will make make it certain that they both that, that the entire plaza is filled now. This the sign resembles all the signage that was designed for the site and is going to a location previously approved by the board. So uh, we have the recommendation by the zoning administrator who has this file. I do. Thank you. Resolution number 14-55. Whereas, whereas, whereas. Now, therefore, be resolved that the planning board finds that the proposed tenant sign exhibits design unity in shape, colors, and utilized in fonts, and therefore recommends issuance of a sign permit by the zoning administrator for the wall sign for candy, nail, and spa as proposed. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is alternatives. Would you be the alternatives, folks? No. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, this is the, will be the final, <coughs> oh. the final uh, space in Rockledge Plaza that's been taken. Uh, the business is f to sell comics, toys, and cards, collectible cards, I guess. And I just want to take a moment to oh. say these are, these small spaces are hard to rent. And these are the kinds of businesses that are perfect for small strip centers like this. Yeah. So I wish them luck. Um, again, the sign comports in the same way that the other sign does. So who has this file? <coughs> I do. Thank you. Uh, resolution number 14-56, whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board finds that the proposed tenant sign exhibits design unity in shape, colors utilized, and fonts, and therefore recommends issuance of a sign permit by the zoning administrator for the wall sign, alternative comics, cards, toys, as proposed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's Ed. And the last uh, item, on, or excuse me, penultimate item on the agenda is Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union. Applicants are seeking a re permit permission to erect a wall sign and a new tenant panel sign <coughs> in the directory sign for Hyde Park Mall. Basically, this is a change in logo and a change in font style. Uh, I don't know if you all had a chance to see the, the tenant panel. It's actually even harder to read. Mm -hmm. But the other one isn't really that easy to read either. So, uh, and I guess they'll be consistent this way. Otherwise, they're both <laughs> code compliant. Um, and uh, so, who has this file? I do. 
Resolution rec recommendation for issuance of signed permits pursuant to Town Code Section 108-24.3A, 4D, Hyde Park Mall, tenant wall sign for Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, resolution number 14-57, whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the, that the board makes the following findings with respect to the request of wall sign. One, the additional size of the letters is appropriate given the sign's date, sign's distance from the road. Two, the increase in size is appropriate due to the size of the building upon which the wall sign is being placed. Three, the size is consistent with and similar to other nearby tenant wall signage. Be it further resolved that the board here, hereby grants the applicant the requested sign bonus to permit a maximum symbol size of 24 inches and a maximum letter height of 16 inches as shown on the plan and recommends a sign permit be issued within 10 days of this recommendation as specified in the code. Second. All in favor? All right. uh, can I, I have one yes. question on that yes, first? Sorry. Uh, this is a Victoria question, and I did not get a chance. I, I didn't see this till late this afternoon. Um, they say it that the height change to allow us to grant all the way up to 24 inches is based on being something like 900 foot from the entrance way, not from the actual Route 9. If you go from Route 9 and you look over, it's really much closer. My question is, what's the point of law on that? Do we say from the entrance way to the plaza or from the thoroughfare? Um, I have to look at what the text says. Um, but in the past, it's consistent with how we've treated other sign bonus requests. I believe that to be consistent. That you have done, or I've seen them written that way before. But at some point, we should probably go back and double check that because, in fact, the credit union physical building probably isn't even 100 foot. So it raises the question of how much, I believe that would give us five inches. You can't even see it southbound. Well, yeah, you have trees, and, and the whole question comes down to we may need to change the law at some point. We really should probably take a look at that. Well, I think uh, Mr. Dupree is looking it up right now. Mr. <laughs> Dupree is. <laughs> and it. I says, neglected to bring my code. It says primary access. access. Right. So it's, it's consistent with the language. What it was was when we, when we worked on the code to revise it last time, the sign section, we were talking to the sign fabricators, the two professionals we had, who said that you don't really just want people looking at it from the road. You really want people knowing when they first come into like a strip center, they want to be able to see this way, this way, this way, and then head to it. So that's why we, we made it from the uh, access, the primary access roadway. And it says primary because we were thinking about in cases uh, such as this shopping center, uh, all our shopping centers actually mm -hmm. that are big all three of them have multiple ways to get in so we were looking at what the primary is because you don't want to measure from the Everyone secondary from yeah secondary. so that they could just keep getting bigger sizes so that's why that's like that and by the way I happen I did after I read this this afternoon I went down to there and in fact it's in perfect proportions of the building being it that is size. no it is so I mean I have no problem with Good. it this is kind of a question of mm -hmm. I'm sorry I should have asked them was there any further discussion before oh, we no problem. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. And we have a separate resolution now for the freestanding tenant panel. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Polidaro, for whipping that out for us. <laughs> <laughs> resolution recommendation for issuance of signed permits pursuant to Town Code Section 108-24.3A, 4D, Hyde Park Mall tenant panel on freestanding sign <laughs> for Hudson Valley for a credit union. Resolution number 14-57A, whereas, 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 whereas. Now, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby recommends that the Zoning Administrator issue a signed permit for the proposed tenant panel on the existing freestanding sign as shown on the drawings prepared by the timely signs dated January 7, 2015. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Would you be the Busics? Oh. oh, right. Oh, okay. Paul sends his regards. Thank you. Where did I see that name? Oh. He sent uh, the old guy. <laughs> and I just have um, an update. I have copies of the letters of authorization and the new drawings. Perfect. Do you want to? You can just. Oh, uh, no. for the record, um, the this is um, the representative is from Timely Signs, and he was offering. Letter, uh, hard copy letters of authorization from John Azari and the owner of the site authorizing them to represent before to come before the town uh, planning board 
uh, it's required under our code that the actual site owner sign off, not just the lessee. So thank you. I'm sorry, I remember you now. I just forgot. <laughs> I was thinking across the river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you very much. The last item on the agenda is a discussion, a referral from the town of Asopus on a minor subdivision. Uh, I scheduled this on. Uh, we had a very brief amount of information that Ms. Knapp sent to us. Okay. And and they approved it tonight. What? But you mean an extra? <clears throat> okay. I came down and took a look because what concerned me was that the applicants initially for the subdivision were not showing a house lot. And it seemed as though the Asopus Town uh, Planning Board was not bothering to say, well, show us where the, lot's going to, the house is going to be. After I read through the entire file, um, as I told Ms. Dexter next to me, one of the most interesting things was that in it there was a notice of violation to remedy, and it said they needed to cease using the spot for a nude model photography studio. <laughs> but the nude, modeling, uh, nude model photography uh, seemed to have lapsed. Good night, Ms. Pollardaro. Safe drive back. Oh, and by the way, for the record, congratulations. I'm not sure the rest of the board knows, but you just made partner. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Um, at any rate, the, the, in the most recent maps that we received, the house that's proposed that was mentioned in the minutes as being right along the shoreline has been pulled well back. And uh, out of a construction area, there's now shown minimal impact. So. I'm not really sure that we, there's much for us to comment on other than I'd like to write a letter basically just praising the, the planning board for taking the hard look mm -hmm. to say we need to know where the house is. And because if you read all the minutes, the applicants brought an attorney finally, or lawyered up as we say, and the attorney was accusing them of going too far, being too demanding, and they held their guns, and I think it's a better project now as a consequence. Well, they, so explain, they explained to them that being on the river put them into a bunch of different districts that tied the planning board's hands and that by law they had to of course. ask all these questions. So I was proud of our sister board across the river in other I was words, very for proud doing of it. the yeah. parts that I read. So I will uh, compose a, a brief letter just more, more or less offering some praise into the, the procedures. And again it's just about the visual impact so you know if they deem that there's and if you've read that it's now been moved and that the major disturbances is not going to be there however if they do change it we would like to see it again. I'll add that to the letter. I'll also point out that this is going to um, Superintendent Olson of the National Parks uh, Service uh, Historic Sites, for specifically the Vanderbilt Estate right. because it's located directly across. One thing that's not clear in the maps that I re when I reviewed them is it doesn't show uh, limits of, t of tree disturbance removal. And right. I'd like to add that, that, we, that since that's something we do, they should show that as well. Oh, and just you just reminded me that um, we had an application for the culinary at one point where we were asked about the uh, impact to the occupants across the river. Right. And when we looked across the river, one of the houses that had been built there looks like all they had done was pushed the trees down oh, the, yeah. uh, the slope. And so we would, I would just like to make sure that we do mention to them that um, for tree removal that just knocking them down the slope is not acceptable. Um, one of the things we discovered, Ms. Moss and I, is that that's not an MS4 community across the way. Oh. I know. And so they have less regulation in terms of taking trees and just dumping them down mm. than what we would. But they're mm. still in the scenic area. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'll add those two and I'll circulate this. Um, we're not in a rush. They've just had a public hearing. So what I'll probably do is have you guys vote on it before the next meeting. All right? Not a problem. Sounds any good. other business from anybody tonight? Make it a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks and for coming back, Jan. Like I said, and Happy, happy New Year to everybody. Almost.